Igor Novikov was born on this day, May 23rd, 1962, and he's a Ukrainian-American chess grandmaster who earned the title in 1990, achieving his career peak rating of 2614 back in July of 1999. Is broken into the FIDE Top 100 on seven, seven different occasions. His opponent in this game is the great Judith Polgar. Judith was born July 23rd, 1976, and she is universally considered the strongest woman chess player in the history of the game. Number one among women on planet Earth for an unbroken period of over 26 years, beginning from the age 12, <laughs> when she made Grandmaster. She made Grandmaster at age 12 in 1989, and she remained the top woman player for the entirety of her professional life until she retired from competitive chess in August 2014 at the age of 38. She had a peak rating of 2,735. That's 2735 in the year 2005. And that was good enough to get her a number eight ranking on planet Earth, not among women, but among all players. So, Polgar, one of the greats. I saw a game last year between a blitz game between she and Magnus Carlsen. You could probably catch it that Polgar won. Novikov with d4, Judith with knight f6, c4. G6. So we have a King's Indian defense. Knight C3. Bishop G7, the normal variation. E4. D6. King's Knight to E2 is Kramer's variation. And castles. Knight g3, e5, d5, a5. Bishop e2, knight a6. Pawn h4, pawn c6, h5, pawn takes d5, bishop pawn takes the pawn, and now knight c5. Bishop g5 by Novikov, pinning the knight. More common is bishop e3. But in my mind, h6 is quite appealing here. It has been played a few times. Pushing that bishop back to h8. And then you can always pin the knight on the next turn. And h6 remains enticing to me for quite a few moves in this game. But bishop g5 by Novikov. a4. Queen d2. Queen a5.
And F3 here. F3 is a novelty. I do not believe F3 has been played in any other game. I still would have liked to see H6 here, wouldn't you? But nonetheless, white is a touch better based on the eval bar. Although black is already castled. Bishop d7, king f2. With this rook here, Novikov has no intention of castling. Knight takes the h-man here would be an interesting move. And of course, moving a rook to the c-file should be considered. Judith opting for neither of those ideas plays b5. H6 still calling to me. At this juncture, but Novikov with b4, which is quite interesting. Of course, H6 is going to force bishop h8, regardless of when it gets played. You could always play b4 next or bring back your other bishop. b4, pawn captures en passant, and pawn captures pawn. But did I mention how much I'd like to see h6? <laughs> now what would be really interesting after h6 instead of bishop h8 and pawn takes pawn is queen b6 this would make for an exciting game because that actually protects the bishop from being captured White would have to block the diagonal because if you if you play pawn takes bishop, you've lost the game. Check. But it's double check. And because it's double check, you have to move your king. The only legal move then is king f1. And thanks for the game. Now, of course, Novikov would surely have seen that and played bishop e3. But now I can play the very exciting bishop takes the pawn. And once again, it's the same thing. It's just different. You cannot capture that bishop with the bishop. You have to capture here. Now, the eval bar has this equal. But very interesting and exciting game that would have made for. Anyway, A takes B3 by Novikov. And now black mounts that attack with queen B6. I like the idea. Objectively, maybe queen B4 stronger. I'm not sure. I love this idea of queen B6, though. Doesn't look like the eval bar is backing me up on queen b4. So I must be incorrect. Well, bishop e3 is compelled. Pawn b4 hits the knight. Knight a4 compels a trade of material. That trade comes in the form of bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop. And now, as in the aforementioned alternate line, 
Polgar plays bishop h6. And once again, we cannot take, else we are checkmated. He played rook h to b1 on this turn. I was wondering about bishop to b5. I'd like to see later what the analysis engine says of this, although the eval bar doesn't look like it would be a good choice. Perhaps not. But bishop f4, excuse me, rook hb1, bishop f4. Um, yeah, bishop f4 by black. Do not play. Let's talk about some knots here. We do not want to play rook takes the pawn. That will be answered by rook takes rook, knight takes rook. And after this, you can see bishop takes the queen, bishop c7, and perhaps knight c3, rook a1, and maybe bishop f4. Black looks uh, better here, but not as better as Bishop F4 right, right away. Do not play Knight takes the H-man. A knight takes h5, I can push to a5. And after bishop takes bishop check, queen takes bishop. Rook takes pawn, rook takes rook. Queen takes rook. Now knight takes knight. And can you take this? It would not be a good idea to allow this check. So don't play rook a4, don't play queen uh, knight h5. Can this be taken with the knight? That's the last consideration, and that might be worth consideration. Because of the same continuation, this bishop is pinned. So, first of all, if he doesn't take my queen, I can always come back to c5. And if he does take my queen, as in the line, I've got his queen. As in the previously shown line. All right, bishop f4 was played. Bishop b5. If you play a5 here. That will be answered by rook takes pawn here as well. And you have a similar continuation as the one I showed earlier. Actually, here I might have a sneaky little tactic with knight f5. <laughs> this would be fun to play. It's poisoned. You've heard of poisoned pawns. This is a poisoned knight. Can't be taken. Now, I'm sure she wouldn't have taken it. She would have played something like um, maybe queen a2 or queen d8. Both of which should be fine. And then after knight h6, check just king g7, and you're, you're golden. All right, bishop b5, b3. Rook 
Rook a b8 is probably less than ideal. Although white would have to be concerned about bishop takes knight. If you play rook b2, just push the pawn further. If you play rook takes pawn, well, actually, bishop takes bishop is probably the best here. And after check, you have to take that with your bishop. Black looks clearly better here as well. It's pretty complicated, but rook ab8 is probably fine after all, but maybe not as good. Maybe not as good as the text. b3. Queen e2, bishop takes bishop check. Now, obviously, um, taking this pawn with either the knight or the pawn isn't so good. If takes, we've got rook takes this pawn, and then if h4, knight f5, and I am fine. Um, and if takes with the knight, then I've got knight takes knight, and it's not much different than, than the other alternative. So both those lines are wisely avoided by our heroine. Bishop takes on e3 check. Black with the better of it for the time being. Queen takes bishop. Here's an amazing move by Judith Polgar. Knight takes d5. That would be a hard move for me to play. I don't know about you. That sacrifice is accepted. And with the capture of that knight, e4 is now available, isn't it? So f5 has to be played to prevent knight e4. And knight takes pawn looks interesting here. You can see the threat of... of um, F4 here. So since you're losing your knight anyway, maybe you just go ahead and take this pawn. Um, Novikov played king e2. Getting out of the rook's line of fire, getting out of the queen's line of fire. I'm tempted to play knight takes pawn here and then put my king on this side. Well, king e2 is Novikov's choice. And f4 is certainly played. Queen f2. I don't know, maybe queen d2 was called for. Play queen d2 and then take up here. But queen f2 is what was played. Well, I mean, the point is after takes, I'm going to take here. Uh-huh. Well, 
Well, Polgar having a decisive advantage here. How does she lose this game? E4 is the questionable move. Better move here, in my estimation, is to occupy the open file with your rook. And now knight e4 is a winning threat because it hits the queen but opens the file. So you'd have to play something like queen f2. If you play something like queen h4, then knight e4 can be played. And you dare not take that with your pawn. You'd have to take with the queen. But there's rook c2. And black has placed this game safely in the bag. Um, so for that reason, queen f2 is probably needed here. But even at that, after queen d8, black should be Jim Dandy. e4. Debatable. Judith, excuse me, Judith's black. Novikov, pawn takes the pawn. Pawn takes pawn, check. Pawn takes pawn. Queen c7. And queen c7 brings an even... Further shift back towards center on the eval bar. Pawn takes pawn check, king h8. Novikov preventing queen e7 check with queen g5. But honestly, that shifted the eval bar. Look at that thing going way back down. I think F4 is the better approach. And if knight E4, queen D3. The rook can't give check because of our bishop. The queen can give check, but queen e3 can now block now that this pawn is out of the way. So queen g5, not the best choice, although understandable. Queen f7. Yeah, I was going to argue with this move, but the eval bar favors this. I thought knight um, takes pawn. I gave knight takes pawn an X clam, but the eval bar says Judith's move is better. So I was thinking knight takes pawn, rook takes knight, rook takes rook, bishop takes rook, and now queen c2 was the line I had in my eyeballs. Well, this should cer certainly be winning, should it not? You have to get out of check. I guess it's not real clear, is it? I give check, force you to take here. Queen and bishop against queen and rook is not overly clear. 
Okay. So I might be wrong on that. Queen f7, apparently the best um, move. I mean, keep in mind, I put that in there before using the eval bar. All right, so queen f7, rook f1. Rook a7, and she really wants to play b2. Huh. The eval bar not favoring rook a7. Eval bar went back to center. I'm missing something here. One thing's certain, we don't want to play queen takes h7 here. Let's be clear on that because you get skewered. Rook a7, the eval bar jumps to center, and I am not real clear why. What should he she have played here? Maybe just play b2 anyhow. How do I exploit this? Well, the eval bar is still looking good for black. Oh, well, I can win this pawn here. If you take, then rook takes, rook takes b2. Oh, there's a tactic here. Now that the rook is off the first rank, this pawn is pinned. That's the move. Ah, uh, wow. I only saw it because I played through the moves. I did not see that in advance, other than to say maybe b2 has to be played right away. So, uh, apparently this gives white equality. I overlooked it. King D2. Pawn B2. I wonder if Rook E7 is any better here. If I play Rook E7, um, does that compel him to play Queen's Rook E1 and trade Rooks? So that now I can take this pawn. The eval bar still says this is equal, though. Pawn b2. Queen's rook b1. Now rook e7. Rook g1. And uh, can I just take this now? Uh, rook g1. I thought rook, uh, rook takes b2 was superior, but the eval bar says this is not. I'd have to play queen g4, not queen h6. If you play queen h6, knight takes the pawn, hitting the rook, rook b4, rook takes pawn check, king moves out of check, and then knight c3. Anyway, rook takes pawn doesn't work in, in any case, so rook g1. Queen f4 check. Here again, I wondered if knight e4 couldn't be played. Now, I gave myself an exclam on this move, thinking this would be better, but 
The Eval Bar is not backing me up here either. My point is, pawn takes knight, queen f2 check, bishop has to block. Queen d4 check, bishop has to block. And now I can pick up the pawn here. That's a mistake. My evaluations are incorrect, according to the eval bar. Okay, we can rule out knight b3, though, because king c2, and then you have to go back. That we can rule out. And obviously we're still not pawn grabbing with the queen because of the pin that it would allow on the h file. So we're still not playing queen takes. Queen f4 check. And that forces a queen trade. Now rook takes pawn, rook takes pawn, king c1. Rook takes pawn, king b1. Rook g7, rook takes rook. I prefer to double my rooks here. And then let her spend the move to trade. But rook takes rook, king takes rook. So we have rook bishop against rook knight and one extra pawn for white. Novikov played king a2. Perhaps bishop c6 would have been in order, but I'm not certain. Now, king f6, rook e2, rook f5, bishop c6, knight takes pawn here. I give this an x glam because that pawn is more valuable than that knight. Bishop takes the knight, rook takes the pawn. And this should be a drawn game from here. But don't forget there are clocks and other factors. King b3, rook e5, rook h2. King e6, rook h6, king d5. King b4, rook e1, rook h5, rook e5. Rook h3, king d4. Bishop c2, rook c5, rook h4, king e5, bishop b3, rook c8, rook h5, king e4, bishop c4, rook c5. Rook h6, rook c6, king c3, rook b6, rook e6, check. King f5, king d4. Rook c6, rook e8, king f6, rook f8, king g7, rook f7, king g6, rook f1. Rook c1, bishop d5, rook a5, rook e1, king f5, rook e8, rook a6, bishop c4, rook c6, bishop e6, king f6, king d5. White is on the attack, but rook a6, rook f8, check, king g5, bishop d7, rook a1, bishop c6, rook d1, check, king e6, rook e1, king takes, and the move counter sets back 
to zero. As the rules are written, if 50 moves are played without progress, the game is drawn. And progress is defined as either the advancement of a pawn or the capture of any material. So this was move 75. This is a textbook draw, but not an easy draw to secure. As we'll see here, Judith Polgar loses this game. But just so you know, all the rules, I'm going to come back here and show you that right here, from this point, this was move 45, which may, means if neither a capture nor a pawn push would be played by move 95, Polgar would have held the draw by move 95. Well, she only made the move 75 before that pawn was captured, which push, pushes the move to make to 125. She needs to survive to 125 to claim a draw. This is a textbook draw. Now, I've got a video that I've already made on this in the past for my YouTube channel that I'm going to show. But the basic technique, I'll explain it here as well as it gets explained on the video, is to uh, basically avoid the center with your king and your rook. We're going to avoid these lines with our king and our rook. And we're going to try to park in one of these flank regions with our king and our rook. Particularly on the third, sixth, C or F. In other words, we'll settle for these squares if we must, but we prefer the blue squares. Now with that, let me go to a video and then we'll show the remainder of the game. This from my YouTube channel, maybe a month or two ago. It wasn't that long ago. Let's put it up there. Defending with a king and a rook against a king and a rook and a bishop should be a draw. It's a theoretical draw. It's a table-based draw. But the guy with the rook and the bishop has good winning chances in actual practice because it's a very difficult draw to secure. Even grandmasters have lost on the defending side of this endgame. Now, I've tried it against Stockfish on a number of occasions and made some draws, so I wanted to demonstrate the method that has given me the best results. Do keep in mind, however, that I've managed to lose even with the technique I'm about to show. My basic plan is to get my pieces into one of these flank regions that I've highlighted here and to avoid moving my pieces to the central lines. Now, without further ado, let's give it a try. All right, we're going to begin by working our king toward the aforementioned region. But here his rook covers the F file, his bishop covers the E file, and his king covers the D file. So we'll try rook F8. Obviously, the computer won't take. If he had, it would be stalemate. But we are now allowed to access that um, region of nine squares. And here we just want to carefully maneuver our pieces throughout this region until we hopefully reach 50 moves or we make a repetition. Let's go king g6 and just come back. 
defend our rook, and now we can go back. King g6 again, and we can't go back, so king g7. Now we're forced to the h file, so king h6, and now king h7. And we just go back and back. And now again back to h6, and again, and again, and again back, and again back. And never go to h5 because um, that's a central line. So here let's play. And would be checkmate. And he's left us with only one way to stay in the region, so rook f7 is necessary. And now king h7 and back. Again, rook f6. Now we're forced. Uh, we can attack the rook. And here the safest is king f7. And now let's uh, go king f8. And now back to f7 and back again. And again back and again back and back back again. Okay, now our king is frozen in place. That forces the rook to move. Never leave that region. And we'll just come back. Again, the king is frozen, so rook f6. And we just go back here. And back. And back. And back. And back. Stay in the zone. And let's go back. Rook f6. And we can go back. And back. And back. And finally, there's your repetition. And as I mentioned in the video, even that technique is not foolproof, and it's hard to do because the computer, you saw I was playing it at the maximum stockfish level, rated 3200. In that one example, I was able to get a draw, but I had tried it three times. I had recorded two unsuccessful attempts and then got it on the third try. Well, I'm not even a grandmaster, but was able to hold it on that third try. So it is possible. So Judith here making her way to the region that I mentioned, but she stays in the center. So she's not using the technique that I use. And uh, rook b5, rook g8 check, king h5, king e4, king h4, rook g1. And then, of course, king f4 creates a corridor. So king h5, bishop f7 check, king h6. That's where her king wants to be in this region. or one of these regions, king f4, king h7, bishop g6, king h8, bishop f5, rook a5, rook g6. And it's here that she has to play to that region. She should play this way or this way and get into that region. I prefer rook a8. Rook a7 is fine as well. But I prefer to be up here because that's where she's being attacked. But rook b5, I gave a double question mark to, and the eval bar backs me up on this. If she had played rook to a8 or rook to a7, you can't play rook to a6 because that's hot, right? But if she had played to a7 or a8, the eval bar still shows that this is a draw. And, of course, if check is given, then we play king g7. So this was the losing move. Rook b5. And king g5. Rook b2. King f6. Rook h2. Rook g3. Rook f2. Rook h3. Forces resignation. Now why? Because your only legal move here is king g8. 
And now all white has to do, because the king creates a barrier here and the rook, uh, the bishop creates a barrier here, all white has to do is move to any one of these queenside squares and checkmate cannot be prevented. The king cannot escape that corridor. So best practice is just get as far away from the enemy king as possible, but it's too late now. It doesn't matter what you play. Obviously, if you come back here or come back here, that's checkmate. And if you come here, she uh, um, Igor gives check and you have to block, and then that's checkmate. And the thing that stalls the longest is to sacrifice your rook for the bishop, but that's still a very easy checkmate for white. 